Yuck! I think I see its brains! What are you talking about? Uh, earlier to the... <clears throat> I cut into this melon, and all this slimy stuff was inside. I think it was its bra... Wait! Melons have brains, right? No, Gus. These aren't its brains. These are its seeds. Wait, seeds? Like flower seeds? Yes, Gus. They would help, well, you know, make more melons. Hmm. So it wasn't brains. It's like it's eggs. Uh, Gus, you need to learn more about seeds. Okay. If you've ever eaten an apple, a watermelon, or like Gus, a cantaloupe, you've seen the seeds inside. And these are the tiny pieces plants make to produce new plants. And when the seeds are buried, they turn into plants if they have the right conditions to germinate, like an apple tree, watermelon, tomatoes, peppers, and more, lots more. And seeds are in most plants, and people and even animals will eat seeds too. Have you ever had a sunflower seed? Well, hey, guess what? You have eaten a seed. But before a seed can sprout, it needs to go through a process called germination. Germination happens inside the seed. So let's learn a bit more about how germination happens. But to do that, we need to take a look at a seed. A seed is made up of three different parts, the embryo, the endosperm, and the seed coat. So first, let's talk about the outside of the seed. The outside is called the seed coat. This is the part of the seed we see and hold it in our hands before we eat it or plant it in the soil. And the thicker seed coat keeps out water and sunlight. This is so the embryo inside doesn't get the water and sunlight it needs to begin growing before it is planted in the soil. The embryo is inside the seed and it's the most important part of a seed. And inside the embryo are all of the cells needed to grow into a full grown plant. The seed embryo has three different parts, its primary roots, cotyledons, and its embryonic leaves. The primary root is the first thing to pop out from the seed during the germination process. And it creates something called the root tip or anchor root, which is long and goes deep in the soil to help support the entire plant as it continues to grow. The cotyledon is what helps feed the plant its nourishment to all of the parts of the embryo when germinating. And the cotyledon looks like a miniature leaf in some plants, or can be chubby and fleshy in plants like beans. It pops out from the soil with a seedling as it continues to grow from under the soil. I just popped out like I'm a seedling. <laughs> And last, we have the embryonic leaves, and these are the first leaves to appear above the ground for the new plant. Then we have the endosperm. The endosperm gives the embryo its nutrients. Usually these nutrients are starch and proteins. And these allow the seed to work and activate while it waits to be germinated. And you can actually find the endosperm under the seed coat. It surrounds the entire embryo in most seeds. So here's a question that I'm sure a lot of you will say yes to. Have you ever had popcorn or white rice? Well, hey, guess what? You've eaten a seed's endosperm. In fact, it is estimated that over 60% of the calories people eat come from endosperm. Wow, would you believe that 60% comes from something inside of a plant's seeds? No. Hmm. Cool fact, right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. So now we know a little bit about the seed and what's inside. 
But what actually happens when a plant that comes from that seed breaks through the soil? Hmm, let's find out. When you plant seeds in soil, you have to make sure you give it a little bit of water too. The soil must be moist, but not muddy. <laughs> That's right, Quinn, and it's very important that you don't use too much water because the seeds need to take in oxygen and minerals from the soil and water through the seed coat's pores, which are like tiny holes in the seed coat. This gives the seed the food it needs to begin opening and working its way up through the soil into a plant. And once it has enough water, the embryo gets too big for the seed and blasts through the outer shell. And that's when a small plant begins to appear. We learned about the root tip earlier. And we're not talking about the root tips that your mom will start dying as she gets older. Oh, you're playing with fire now, Gus. Let's move on. The root tip is the part that anchors the seed to the soil, which keeps feeding the seed embryo the nutrients needed while still under the soil. Here's a tip that you could share with your mom or dad. Tell them that if you ever plant seeds during the summer, that they should plant them deeper than they do in the spring, because it's hard for seeds to get enough water in the summer. And this is because the top layer of soil dries out really fast when it gets hotter outside. Seeds come in all different sizes, shapes, and even colors. That's right, Quinn, and this means that many seeds germinate differently. Seeds with hard seed coats usually germinate slower than seeds with soft seed coats. You see, seeds with hard seed coats take longer because it's hard to absorb enough water to make the seed coat get soft enough so the inside parts of the seed can actually emerge. Here are a few other reasons why it could take longer for some seeds to grow. When a seed is underground, seeds don't actually see the sun, but they need the heat from the sun to keep them warm so they can actually germinate. But if it's too hot and the soil is too dry, the seed cannot get the water it needs. But if it's too wet, the soil cannot provide the oxygen needed for the seed to germinate. And if you plant a seed too deep, it will use all the energy and food stored in the cotyledon before it even has a chance to pop up through the ground. And hey, guess what? Did you know that most seeds cannot germinate in the fall or winter? It's because the ground is too cold and the seeds cannot germinate. During this time, the seed is dormant, which means it is asleep until spring. Ugh, Gus, I don't think anybody could fall asleep to your lullaby. Anyway, when the seed wakes up, well, that's what we learned all about. That is germinating, and that is when and how a seed becomes a seedling and then grows up into a full-sized plant. So the next time that you see a seed, remember that the seed started from another seed, and a seed before that even. And all those different kinds of seeds have created all the grass you walk on to the fruits and vegetables you eat. Hey, guess what? Now you, me, and them know all about those brains. <laughs> Just joking. Seeds inside plants. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Bye. Bye. Seeds like flower seeds? Yeah, Gus. But they're they're not. Okay. You know what I mean? Seeds with hard seed coats usually germinate slower than seeds with soft seed coats. <laughs> but soft seed coats. Seed coats. You know what I mean?